There we go. Okay, we are recording now. All right, awesome. Well, thanks again for having me on. I so, so appreciate it. And um, just excited to be here with you guys. And as Cassie and I were kind of talking about what you needed to hear and what was coming up. I shared with her that something that we've done with our team quite a bit and that I think is so valuable that both in this plexus world and just in the world in general, we do not do very well as a society. Uh, and that's really focusing on our strengths. Um, often as we grow up, we're in school, we get grades and maybe an A in English and you got an A in band and you got a B in chemistry and then you got a F in algebra or something you know and usually what happens is you're gonna focus on that grade you did the worst in that typically is just what happens and so we're kind of trained and we've trained ourselves or you have that annual review right I don't know how many of you guys do annual reviews but you spend like 10 minutes talking about the great things you did and then 50 minutes talking about all of your opportunities <laughs> that you could work on or focus on. And so this is very much, uh, and even in our business, right? Like, okay, let me just, we're going to sit down for 30 minutes and talk about goals and we're going to talk about uh, five minutes. These are my successes. And then the next 25 minutes, we're going to talk about, um, I didn't do good at this and I didn't do well at that. And so how do I do better at those things? And I just want to challenge you guys to shift that mindset a little bit. And I'm going to, I took some notes um, just about that. And I just want you to shift your mindset and and look through maybe a new lens with all of this, okay? And so when you think about a strength, I want you to think about what you believe a strength is or what that means. And often we view that as what you're good at, right? We think, oh, my strength is what I, maybe you're good at cold messaging or maybe you're good at one-on-one -on -one conversation. We view those things as what we're good at. And then on the opposite end, we view a weakness as something we're just not good at. Um, the funny thing is, as we look at the color personalities, often people think that I'm a green color personality because I talk about health and nutrition. And I actually sco score the lowest on that. And so sometimes we mistake a weakness for something we're bad at and we mistake a strength for something we're good at, where sometimes um, there's a different reason. There's an underlying reason we're, we're maybe good at those things or maybe it's adaptive learning that we're good at those things. Um, but really a weakness, I want you to think about the activities in your life that weaken you, that drain you. What are the things that when you're done with it, you're exhausted by it? And what are the strengths that you're just fueled by that at the end of them, you're like, whoa, that took me 20 minutes. That felt like five minutes. That was amazing. Uh, and you just felt like this rejuvenation through it. Those are your strengths. Those are the things that fuel you, that fire you, that if you got to do those things day in and day out, you would likely would not hardly feel like you were working. Your eight hour workday would go through and it would, it would have felt like, oh my goodness, it's only been two hours. No, it's time to go home. And so that often is when you're tapping in your, your strengths, that thing that strengthens you. And successful people, when you look, they often tap into those strengths um, and they manage their weaknesses. So my team knows that follow through or like if we do incentives and things like that, they know that they need to come to me because I'm not going to be that detailed person writing down every incentive that I owe you. Uh, that is just not not where I tend to use my headspace. So if you're on my team and we're doing an incentive, you know I'm gonna pay you out, but you might have to remind me. You might even have to remind me three separate times because I'm driving the one time you remind me and then I've forgotten. And it's, it's just not one of those things <laughs> that fuels me up to keep track of all those details. Uh, and so, Luckily, I have an incredible team that, and you know when your team is full of, you know, maybe 10, 20, 30 people, it's a lot easier to manage than a team with hundreds of people. 
So for me, I can handle tracking 10, you know, 20 level ones, but then to keep track of all of those, I need those teammates to help me with that. So managing those weaknesses instead of trying to fix those weaknesses, um, something that if I had to track all of that, it would probably take me a very long time. Instead, I have my team keep track of all those things, and then that fills me up because I enjoy working with those people, and I enjoy that one-on-one one -on -one conversation. It's so that brings me, me strength uh, when we're all working together. So I want you to think about this. So I want you to write down the word sign, S-I-G-N, okay? So first, it means success, okay? Success. The I mean instinct. The G means growth. And the N means needs or fulfillment. Those are kind of your indicators for, is something a strength for me? Is it something I am successful at that fuels me, that gives me energy? Is it something that I instinctually and innately do well, that it doesn't take much effort out of me to, to do that? Is it something that I'm, I grow in, that I may be so interested in, um, that you're growing in that all of the time. Um, like for me, like I said, I'm not a detailed person, but often I get mistaken as a green because I do uh, the research on a lot of things. But often I do that research because I care, it's out of a place of me caring for people and wanting to give people the accurate information as opposed to the information itself. And so what is it that's helping you to grow? Um, and then what is it that's making you feel fulfilled? So I, I really want you to consider those things. And in your business, utilize one another. If one of you is not good at one thing, reach out to your group and to your team and, and say, hey, I'm really struggling in this area. Um, how do, how do you make it work for you? I know Kasha and I had chatted recently about some stuff and I just shared with her like, this is what's worked for me. Maybe it'll work for you. Maybe it won't. And you know, that's even Cassie and I have, have partnered on things like what's working for you, girl. What's not? Because, um, she doesn't want to waste that energy on trying to figure it out when somebody else maybe has a knack for that gift. And then she can go, oh yeah, I can totally just copy that and make that work for me. <laughs> and that's part of this business, right? How often are we copying posts from other people? Because maybe posting is not your strength. Maybe it's something that doesn't come innate for you. But there are people in this business that it is their strength. And so, yes, work smarter, not harder. So utilize those posts that other people are putting out there. Utilize that information that maybe isn't that strength for you so you can focus on those strengths instead of trying to figure out your weaknesses. I'm going to tell you guys a little bit of a joke. Are you ready? I know she's recording this, but don't tell the world. I recently just started paying a friend of mine to do my Instagram. True story. Like one social media account was enough and trying to do another seriously made it. I just, I hated it. Like I hated thinking about doing it every day. And so I just was really praying about it and spent a lot of prayer on who I could have do it. And so I now go in there once a day and I might send a message to somebody or I'll like some things. I do all the things on my Instagram that I love. Now all of that is my content. I have a Facebook group that her and I, like I put poor content into. And so she kind of combines my content with my images, but she sort of runs that for me. Um, and I do all the things that I love on it instead. And now not all of you may be at a place in your business, but I've been doing this for three and a half years. I have a big team. A lot of my network uh, from my Facebook, I've sort of tapped into quite a bit already. So I do need to expand a little more into the Instagram world and I get the benefit of that, but it was something I did not want to do and dreaded every day. So those things that you're looking at that you dread every every day, start talking about solutions for those. Start thinking creatively about how you can manage around that weakness that you have because it is probably not a strength if it's something you're dreading, all right? The next word I want you to write down is stop, okay? Now, this is going to kind of talk about your weaknesses. Sometimes, just stop doing it. 
if it's something that is not fulfilling you, just stop doing it. And, and the beautiful thing about Plexus that I love is you can work this business however you choose. You get to do this in a way that you get to choose this business. Um, a lot of people don't do events. I do events all the time. I think I did over a dozen events this summer because it's something that fulfills me, that um, is a passion of mine. Um, where you, if you follow me on Facebook, you'll notice that um, I might post once a day. Um, when I first started, I'd posted twice a day and that's it. I've never been someone who's posted three or four times a day. I just, it's not, it's not my jam. And so <laughs> utilize those strengths. And the strength for me is really more intimate settings with uh, people. And so anytime I can get an event together, that's what, what my preference is. And so sometimes you just have to stop doing it. I mentioned this already, the T is team up. Team up with people, work together on something. I don't feel like you have to do an event by yourself. I have a couple of people on my team when I've done events in their area, I know they're really good at the visual piece. So I'll just have them set the whole thing up. Like, hey, you set all this up, I'm gonna show up and I'm gonna do my thing. So team up with people. The O is offer up. Sometimes like in this situation, I'm offering up a gift of mine to you all. Something that I'm passionate about is talking about strengths. And so mentioning to Cassie, like, hey, this is something that's worked for me. It might be great for your team. Um, offer up one of your gifts and one of your strengths for other people to use. And you could easily, we find value when other people find value in us. So Cassie asking me to do this, I feel valued in this and in this moment. And if talking or sharing is something that you find value in, let Cassie know. I'm sure she'd be happy to. We're not mind readers, right? None of us can read one another's mind. None of us know what things just grind us and what things fill us up. We might be able to read it and see it, but on a social media platform, it's a lot harder. It's a lot harder than if I'm working with you and I can see the slouch as you walk to file something and I can tell that filing is not your thing. <laughs> you know, this is sort of a different, because we want to maintain high energy on social media, right? Even when we're not feeling good, we want to maintain this positive energy. And so sometimes it can be easy to fake it even though we're not feeling fulfilled. So Offer up one of your gifts for somebody else that especially you know that their gifting is something different than your own because that is what really makes a power partner. That person that thinks differently than you, that person that does life differently than you because when we're able to look at each other and accept feedback that is so different from our own and glean from that, there's power. There's such power in that. And I really believe that that's kind of how God created us. Created us. He designed us in a way that we don't all have the same giftings. He talks about the body for a reason. There's a body of Christ because we're not all a hand. We're not all a foot. We're all creative differently so that we can work together and function and be stronger together. And so team up and offer up really go hand in hand with that. The P is perceive. So sometimes we have to use perception to look at things a little bit differently because our lens is maybe focused. Um, Marcus Buckingham, um, I got a lot of this from him. He is a world-renowned leader in the area of strengths. And he was talking about how he um, didn't like this certain task. So maybe right now in my head, I'm thinking about filing. I just made that when I worked in the optical industry, filing was something I did. And um, people would always come at that a little bit differently. You had some people who would file and take the files in there, exactly how the doctor ended with them, and then just put them in letter to letter. And you had some people who would alphabetize them ahead of time, and then they would put them like, let me do the A's, let me do the B's. That was me. I could not handle it. It was way too unorganized and really stressed me out if I had to look at each individual letter every single time. I could not do that. So I had to shift my focus a little bit and make it manageable for myself. And so I had to look at it and go, let me just do the A's. Okay, now I'm 90% done. Let me do the B's now. And I could sort of chop away at that. And so sometimes just a new perspective around something gives us the clarity that we need um, to focus on it. I want you to put another S at the end of stop. So we're going to make that stops. 
And what that means is suck it up. Sometimes, y'all, we just have to suck it up and get it done, right? Like sometimes you're having a crappy day and you haven't posted and you just need to throw a post out there. And it may not be amazing and it may not be your best work, but because we want people to know that our doors are open, you just copy it from somebody else, make it your own, and put it out there because you just need to suck it up and get it done. Now, when life starts to look too much, and there might be simple tasks that you have to suck it up with. I think about IPAs. I know a lot of people struggle with doing their daily IPAs. And what I find is that sometimes doing them with somebody else that has a similar schedule to you is more beneficial because it seems more fun when you're doing it with another person and so sometimes um, again per perception changing that perception and making it a filtered lens of let me make these IPAs fun and how can I do this I'm still gonna suck it up and do it do it but I need to change this this perspective in this area of opportunity so the other thing I want to recommend for you guys and to write down is the book strength finders 2.0 and that's done by Tom Rath. Yep, I have it here also. If you have not purchased this book, it is so beneficial for your business. And I will tell you that it's probably gonna take you 20 minutes or less to read. A book this thick, you typically are not ever gonna hear somebody say it's gonna take you that little time. But here's the thing, there's a little bit of an intro, it tells you about it, there's a test that you take with it. Let me see if my test is still in here, I think I pulled it out, I like code. Yeah, I pulled mine out. With every book, you get to go online and take a test. The test does take some time, so you wanna give yourself some time, but then it's gonna go through and it's going to tell you what your five greatest strengths are. And so for me, I'm a relator. That's my number one thing, and, and that as you read through the strengths, so then I would go, oh, I'm a relator. Let me read what relator is about. I'm an achiever. I belief is part of who I am, so much of what I do is based on um, belief, my beliefs. Uh, responsibility, so I do feel like I have a responsibility to a lot of people. And then a ranger. So I have an ability to kind of view things and see things and take the puzzle and kind of make the puzzle fit and work. So those are my top five strengths in this book. And I definitely see other things I do in my life, why those strengths have made me successful in other areas when I lean on them and why when I don't lean on those things, I can feel like I'm failing at something. And so do yourself a favor and order this book. It is not gonna take you much time. And I promise you having that perspective and that lens. And if you have a team under you, having that team take that and you sharing with one another. So when you get these in, share your strengths with Cassie. That way she knows, oh, you're a relator. Oh, you'd be so good at helping me with an event then. You'd be so good at helping me figure out how, um, other people will perceive some of our posts on an event. Let me, let me utilize that strength of yours. And then maybe that's not one of her strengths and you're helping her in that area. And so I really want to encourage you to focus on those strengths. Forget the weaknesses and the things that we're told that we're not good at. Um, focus on those things that really other people look at and say, wow, you are superwoman or superman in this area. Uh, look at those things and utilize those because for other people you are a superhuman in that because they're not good at it and it takes for them superhuman strengths to accomplish what you might perceive as simple or easy and you don't feel as though it's superhuman because it's innate for you but the truth is we all have superhuman abilities that other people don't have so tap into that super superhuman ability and go out there and show people what that is any questions? Love that. Oh my goodness. I was just going back and trying to find mine um, and which ones were um, first and things like that in mine. And my first one was positivity. And then my second was woo, because I definitely like to try to woo people, apparently. My third was includer. And 
fourth was ideation, which means creating ideas and things like that. And then five was adaptability. And I agree with um, Lorelai is really taking this test was a huge eye opener for me because it's like, oh yeah, I, you know, so that does really, you know, um, sound a lot like me. And like she said, finding those things that you're great at and powering up with somebody else is going to make you one amazing power team that you're able to, maybe you're like, hey, I can't figure out a post today. Can you help me? Um, and it just makes your business even better as well as that other person's. So. In yes. Yeah, so. Or even just things that you got out of this already. Is there anything you needed to hear? I have one. Uh, hi, I'm Selena. Um, I love the idea that I need to manage my weaknesses instead of trying to fix them. Yes. I think that that's really, really important for me to do. Yeah. So good. I'm glad. I'm glad that you heard that and got that out of it. Yeah. Yep. Don't worry about fixing them. You're never going to fix them, girl. Yeah. <laughs> and if you do, it's going to be I like the Go ahead, Christy. Um, if it's not fulfilling, then stop. I think that like my like anxiety of like Ugh, I have to do this, and then I just don't do anything. Like that, that's a problem for me. And so if I just stop and figure out, okay, so what you know, playing on my strengths, what, what can I do that I love to do that fulfills me, and doing that instead of the things that I hate doing. I that I like that. Yeah. And I'll tell you guys like cold messaging, if ever I'm like, okay, I haven't reached out to anybody. I need to like, just, I don't like to do that at all. So I typically only do that once every week or two, but it's like for a large chunk. So I will sit down and hammer out 20, 30, 40, 50 messages, depending on what my goals are, because I know that I'm to do that for me every single day just is life sucking. And so I know, okay, I just have to suck it up and do it because that's important, but it's going to be easier for me to just like drown myself for this hour <laughs> than do that every single day. <laughs> and so for me, that's kind of how I manage that. Yeah. I've done the same thing on Wednesdays now to where that's my organizational stuff. Like I get all my, things that I need to organize and write down who I've talked to all of that on Wednesdays because I, sometimes there's new people I'm talking to in the car or, you know, like you said, it just random places I'm going to forget. So on Wednesdays I backtrack, figure out, okay, what did I do? How can I, you know, what can I do this in this time frame so that the rest of the week flows better, so flows better, better until that next Wednesday. Um, that has been huge for me lately. So maybe finding what day or time works better for you maybe be a huge eye opener for you as well. Yeah, I could. I really like um one thing that I've been trying to I've been trying to do a lot of work on shifting my mindset in general the past couple of weeks and one thing that I am still trying to figure out but that I am excited about is to do a lot more of the things that fulfill me you know, and not to focus on the things that don't as much, you know, still do them, suck it up and do them, but not to dwell on that and to really just let the joy come in the things that do fulfill me in this business. So I'm really excited to do that and to get some help on some of the things that don't. Yeah. So, so good. And I think, yeah, mindset is, what was that? I just said mindset is half of it, like getting your mind in the right place. Yeah. I think this is going to pair well too um, with all of this that we've just learned in doing our IPA challenge coming up because you're going to be able to find those other power partners that maybe you didn't think of and they're going to have strengths that are going to help you excel in that challenge that we have coming and maybe have you work in a different way you never thought possible. It's good.
Anybody else? Good key points or anything? Tiffany had a good one. She's working on herself, which I think is important. You've got to have time for yourself too. Mm -hmm. I think what a big one for me is just some days you just have to suck it up. I mean, mm -hmm. life and emotions are like king of the mountain right now. And some days I'm, I'm just going to have to suck it up and just focus, you know, and focus on my strengths and what can I do the best because I may not be able to do extra, but just do what I need to do right now to yeah. do my business. Yeah, I agree. I think so in the slide edge, if y'all ever get to that and read this book, it really is amazing. And he kind of talks about that, how there are times where you want to go to bed and you know, your book or whatever is staring right at you, but your pillow looks a lot better. And he's like, yeah, it probably won't. Um, let me see if I can find it. You know, it's probably not going to set your business back. And he's like, but you pretty much just proved yourself that, you know, it's not important enough. Um, right here. It's bedtime, end of day, a uh, rough day in your beat. You head for bed and there's, there's your book sitting there looking at you. You've made a commitment to read 10 pages a day, but man, you are tired. Don't even know if you can keep your eyes open. What do you do? You know, you say to yourself, if I skip 10 pages just for tonight, it's no big deal. He said, and you know what? You're absolutely right. It's not going to be a huge, a huge difference one way or another. It is no big deal. And in that moment, you find out who you truly are. And that was a huge eye opener for me because he pretty much was just saying, because I have a horrible problem of, I don't like the mornings and I press snooze probably 10 to 20 times. And yeah, proved to me right there that I like to be lazy in the mornings and take 10 more minutes of sleep, even though it's only 10 minutes. Um, so in that book, I learned a lot. And if you guys are looking for a good book, that's an amazing one. Anything else for Lorelai? That's Oh, wait, where'd she go? Lorelai. Okay, well, she'll hop back on here in a minute. What, anything else did, stood out to you guys or that you're excited to start focusing on or doing? I'm excited for this IPA challenge coming up and putting these things, the, the sign and the stop stuff into play with the IPA challenge. Yeah, I agree. She had some really good key points right there. And I even liked her annual review that she talked about in the beginning, like write 10 great things and 10 things that worked and, and things like that. I think that that's something that we should definitely do maybe some coaching calls, either reach out to me or whatever, and we can do them together and figure out, okay, in this month that you've been doing Plexus or in this year you've been doing Plexus, what has worked, what hasn't worked. And, and like she said, don't focus on the bad. Let's focus on the good and figure out what fuels you and not drains you. I really liked a lot of that. Okay. Let me,